Right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Really happy you could join us. My name is Greg Hull. I'm the Dean of the Heron School of Art and Design. Again, really happy that you could join us this evening. It's going to be a wonderful conversation. So thank you for being here. Before we get started, I do want to take a moment um, to acknowledge that we're gathered here this evening on the ancestral and traditional lands of the Miami, Potawatomi, Shawnee, Lenape, and other Native peoples of the past and present. We also acknowledge that IUPUI displaced the African-American business and residential neighborhoods of Indiana Avenue and Ransom Place in the 1960s. We honor those who have cared for this place in the past, and we hope sincerely that its current use for the pursuit and sharing of knowledge and understanding, which are goals of the university, will lead to a future that is more equitable. Before we begin, I'd also like to share that complimentary parking is made available tonight by the great frame up of Indianapolis and Carmel. If you're parked in the parking garage, um, parking validation codes are available for you through the gallery team. So if you have questions about that, just let us know. But now it is my sincere pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Heron's Foundation Studies Coordinator, Assistant Professor Sydney Craig. Sydney will introduce and help facilitate this evening's roundtable discussion. So please help me welcome Sydney. Hello, and thank you all for joining us. It's such a pleasure to see you all and have your support for this evening. Um, this is a very exciting time for us because it's a chance for faculty and students to talk about virtual learning, global exchange, and just how we're thinking about being more of a global mindset school in a collaborative place um, as our world grows, right? Um, so this evening, I'd like to welcome my friend and colleague, virtual global learning project partner, Judith Glaser, Professor Judith Glaser, who is here to discuss and share experiences about the virtual global learning exchanges. She is a professor of neo-analog object design in the School of Communication and Design at the Technical University of Applied Sciences in Würzburg, Germany. Professor Glaser is convinced that designing and discarding belong together, just like grasping and understanding. Coming from the arts and crafts, her design is characterized by process thinking. This includes both her own work and creative process, as well as the alternative suggestions for actions that are often inherent in her designs. Using individual works, Judith Glaser provides insights into her work, which repeatedly oscillates strongly between artistic practice and digital interaction. Um, Judith is trained as a goldsmith with international professional experience. She has a master's degree in product design with a focus on interaction design from the Berlin YCNC School of Art. She most recently worked as a freelancer and then as a designer for the studio NAND, which is in a Berlin studio that specializes in data-driven user interfaces and interactive technologies. This work and her teaching activates or activities for the interdisciplinary projects format coding IXD, which led her to research and interest in competencies and knowledge constellations at the interface of design and computer science. So it's a pleasure to welcome colleague Judith Glaser, along with Karen's assistant professor Amritsa Dada from BCD, and also a participant in the virtual global learning projects, and then students from both of our projects who are here to also discuss their experiences. So I will now let um, let the students introduce themselves. Hello, is it? It's on. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dalen. I'm a junior, and right now I'm going through looking through museums, just trying to find like curatorial jobs and like positions. Um, <clears throat> hello, I'm Josie. I'm a freshman, and um, concentration is art education. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allie Kraus. I'm a senior studying visual communication design. I'm also getting a certificate um, for human computer interaction as well. Hello. Hi, I'm Marissa Eckert. Um, I am a senior at Heron and I am studying visual communications design. So Marissa was fortunate enough to be involved in my class's projects as well as Emrita's projects. So we have the perspectives of both of those. So um, I think that's really cool. Excellent. So Emrita, how did you, how did your path 
and process lead you to virtual global learning exchange? So this is interesting. So I'm originally from India. Um, I have been studying abroad for a little while and um, I have also had the opportunity while studying abroad here to go to other places and study abroad abroad again. Um, so I wanted to bring this opportunity to my students in the classroom. Um, as I learned about the virtual global exchange, I thought that this was a wonderful opportunity for students. Um, if they're worried about not being able to um, go somewhere due to family commitments, if the affordability of a trip can be intimidating to many students. So that's why I said, why can't I just bring it to my classroom? So that's how it started. So I started reaching out to um, faculty here at Heron and Orda um, helped us uh, you know, be, she was the matchmaker and she found my partner at uh, Yonsei University in South Korea. Um, Youngbok Hong also helped in that process to establish that relationship. Um, so that, that was kind of the beginning of uh, the, you know, why I wanted to bring in the virtual global exchange into my classroom. And I think um, it has been successful because I've been doing this now. I just completed it last semester for the second time. So I hope to continue this process for the next couple of years um, and could lead to a more um, actual proper exchange maybe for students to go and visit in South Korea. So yeah. And Judith, tell us about how your journey led you to virtual global learning exchange. Yeah, um, yeah, kind of my own practice was always like looking for challenges in either disciplinary regards or also international regards. Uh, and when I then took the opportunity to teach, I kind of had a similar feeling um, that there is something that is beyond their own discipline. Um, looking at uh, design, uh, or art, like if you look at, even if it's like applied, more applied or more artistic and free, um, it's often about identity. And I'm really deeply con um, convinced that by yeah confronting ourselves, by looking into the world, by seeing what's out there, we learn the most about ourselves, and that highly contributes to um, the personalities that we kind of try to support when we educate them in art. Um, and that's what I'm kind of looking for, um, yeah, with my own practice, coming from my own practice, but kind of trying to bring it into the classroom, as you put it. It's really nice, yeah. How do you feel like your your process of working, I mean, you speak about thinking about process and working through process. How does the idea of process help inform your teaching? Oh yeah, that's a complex one. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I mean I'm. Uh, yeah, maybe coming. I'm. I don't know if it's. Uh, yeah, you introduced it. Uh, I'm a. I'm a trained goldsmith, so that's a, like in Germany. That's a four year of training, usually in a little workshop, <laughs> with some master. I. I've. I've been honored to have two masters, uh, in the workshop. Um, where you like you really expose yourself to, to to deeply engraving basically certain patterns of movement, certain knowledge through hearing, seeing, smelling about materials, right? It's like deeply incorporated into the into the craft itself. That's, that's how I've been trained after school, um, basically. And I, I'm really like this kind of embodiment, I'm really con um, convinced that even if we are doing motion design on a computer, right? But it's this knowledge that we have in our bodies, like this, um, um, how do you say the experience that kind of incorporate in our body um, then again leads its way through into the pieces that we are actually creating so it is like uh, interesting that sometimes we have the saying that that the idea hit you like a light bulb right but i feel like kind of that's not true uh, idea is like, like the essence of all the uh, experience we gathered through physical action um, and in order to achieve this i, I kind of confront my students to really do practice in a in a bodily way um, if this is by going out and consuming bird singing but also physically drawing or building um, or exposing small details into great scale this kind of all this physical action right 
um, this is something that I, I get, I kind of guess I got from this really first education experience after school. And this was this craftsmanship that I, I, I've been trained in. Um, oh yeah, did I actually answer the question? I don't know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And, you know, through doing these virtual global exchanges, um, our project was called 4,000 Miles. And that's sort of the umbrella framework for structuring other, you know, other lenses that we could look through how we can do things across time and space. Um, but as we're talking about being so many miles away, these experiences are, as you said, learning about yourself and learning about your own community and how you communicate and how we learn from each other. So I think even though we were speaking about this as a global experience, it's really all about the community and bringing it back to being a very personal thing. Um, students, how did you feel? Did you feel that, did you, what did you feel like you learned about yourselves from, from this experience? Anyone feel free to jump in. Yeah, I can. Um, so when I worked on the project um, that Amrita was leading, um, I was a project manager for the Heron side. Um, and so I was connecting with the group from Yonsei University, um, planning on when we were going to talk to each other, which was a little bit difficult because of the time difference. Um, and just kind of making sure that all of our deliverables were on the right track. Um, for myself, I think just having that opportunity of kind of leading a group and kind of leading two groups to to create successful deliverables and on time, um, it really helped me as a person in my professional career and in my personal life. Um, it gave me a lot of confidence to, um, it made me really kind of believe in myself as a leader and as a designer. Um, so that was one of the biggest takeaways that I have from it. I was just going to second pretty much everything that you said. I was also a project manager. And so since Amrita was kind of leading the project kind of on both ends, um, it was kind of like her idea. So she had like a, a good grasp of the concept. Um, our Yonsei counterparts from in South Korea, they were coming to us with like, what do we need to have done? Like, what do we need to like structure? So it really felt like we were leading like our Heron team, but also our Yonsei team and, and keeping them on track. I think it was a great opportunity opportunity like we were sophomores when we first did it and it really like let me see the role that I gravitate to as a designer which is kind of that like art direction and like management and organization and um, conceptualizing so I learned a lot about myself as a designer through that and how to apply like all of these communication skills to any sort of realm in professionalism in other academic work that I've done um, and things like that. The uh, second time that I did it, I feel like I definitely learned more about my culture and like how my culture is perceived and how like not everything is the same as my perception. And it really gave me insights. My group focused on desserts and in South Korea, like they don't gravitate towards that sweet taste as much. So their desserts were a kind of a challenge we had to overcome. And so it was a very like, um, different way that I had to like wrap my brain around the concept of desserts and and just like having that cultural awareness and that cultural diversity. Um, so I was with Sydney and something I learned was kind of just relearning how to like working in groups because I said I'm a freshman just came from high school last year and being in high school and working in groups is the worst because um, I always ended up being the one who did all the work. So I hated that, just rather do everything by myself. And so when we first introduced this project, I was kind of nervous um, because being with someone so far away and time differences, I was really, again, nervous because I didn't know how it was going to work out, how we were going to work together. Um, luckily, I really liked my group. My group was really amazing. Um, and Amelie, uh, who was from a uh, student from Germany, was really nice to work with, really amazing to work with. And I just found myself actually enjoying the process of us all coming together online on our little online board to post little ideas and come together and connect ideas and find out that we had things in common despite being so far away and being able to just come together and make this idea work and happen 
and really just get a really good group sense that I didn't really haven't really gotten before just with complete strangers. And so that was a really nice thing to learn. I started off the same way of kind of not wanting to work in a group because at the same time I was already working on a group project that didn't go too well. But in the end, it ended up turning out real good and learning from one another. And what I took away most from it was just how much intersectionality goes into creating something. Because like we partnered with German students, but at the same time, I was learning about another culture. Like for me, I learned about Tunisia and like their wedding practices and all that. So it's just like, you gotta really think outside of what you're doing. Like there's a lot that goes into it and like creating something good. Do you all feel like you learn to think a little bit differently by working with these other artists and designers at these other schools. I mean, how, you know, so you were a little bit of an upperclassman. Josie is a first year student. I mean, how did watching how the German students work through the projects, how did that inform your practice? Um, well, our practices were definitely different. Um, we saw, we both had like that first visit to different museums, we posted our ideas. And so we had very different ideas of the things we found interesting. Um, and while we found ways to connect them and come to kind of a compromise, it was definitely different. Um, I think Amelie was more like simple where, I don't want to say simple, but like not minimalist, but we had very different design tastes. And I think you can see that through our patches, which honestly I think is really fun and interesting how we did like the same thing, but it looks different dependent on our cultures and how we think of design. Cause I was just like, I want it to be as colorful and like different and like different textures, different everything as possible. And I think it's really interesting that we were able to make it different, but it was definitely, you could see the difference. Yeah, very cool. Um, I think there's a good example of that even is in the gallery, the projection that's happening, there are all these, um, there are the animations from your groups that were sort of discussing their research beyond the poster into this moving picture. And they're very playful and they're very appealing and um, colorful and bouncy. And then we have some of the, the um, University of Technical Applied Sciences students he Julius made a video that is very black and white and it's so it has just such a different feel and it goes from these little happy animations to this I don't know austere how would you even describe it but it's it's just the aesthetics are so different but yet it works so well together and it's just so interesting to see how they play off of one another um yeah that was pretty exciting did it did you have a favorite moment throughout the exchanges that you were participating in I think um, probably like when we first introduced each other, like met our groups and everything, that was like really exciting. But honestly, like the meetings that we had on Zoom late at night, like all the time um, were always like so much fun. I think um, we, we were all like so excited about the project. And like, even though it was super early in the morning for them in South Korea, it was late at night for us here. Like everyone really had that like, that drive to like do the project and the passion for it and ways to like learn. Um, I thought one of the most interesting parts with that um, sort of teamwork that we did was that we did research for them and they did research for us. So we had to, you know, communicate and share what we found about our own culture, our own cities that we live in and share that to um, our, our counterparts. Um, and it ended up being a lot of fun. I feel like we got really close and those were like kind of those personal moments um, late at night on Zoom where um, we're a little delirious from our day and um, making some good memories. I second the the late nights. Um, it was definitely a little bit of a challenge, but everyone was so open to meeting Heron side late at night, like midnight, and then the Yonce side to early in the morning. And we would even um, like text every now and then and just kind of see how we were doing and communicate with each other um, through a couple different ways. But 
I think that was my favorite part was just like having that communication and just kind of like, it was just kind of funny that it was, you know, midnight here and then it was so early, so early over there. And we were just kind of scrambling to get things done, but in a kind of a fun, fun, silly way. Just to chime in, it was always like, oh, good morning to them. And then, oh, good night to us. So it was fun. Um, so mine's kind of the opposite. Do you remember what the website that we used was? Hero. Hero. Thank you. I was like trying to remember it. It just kept blanking. Um, I remember some of my favorite moments was like coming into class every morning and kind of opening Miro and seeing just how our because each each of our groups had our own board where we could collect our ideas and it's like coming in each class to see how much had changed like between Amelie adding things overnight um, my group mates adding things you know connecting things there's arrows there's whole new sections it keeps growing and growing you have to keep shrinking and shrinking it and like checking all over to make sure you don't miss anything but it was really cool to see how well we were able to bounce our ideas off of each other and how much we were able to grow and develop our ideas and like get one another despite being so far apart and it was really satisfying to see it all come together i really enjoyed seeing how diverse everyone's interpretation was like with a given word or theme and like a big part of the project for us was like finding a commonality between each of ours and it's like you can get take a picture of a spoon and a picture of a dress and like try to figure out how do these connect and for my group we focused on looking past functionality so you can give like emotion or history or a backstory to, to any object like I think one of the most interesting things about this process is that it reveals, you know, you have the overall teaching objective, but the learning that's happening around that, you know, it sets up the experiment for all of these other little learning sessions, you know, learning about yourself, learning um, about these different cultures and communication and things like that. Um, was there anything that you noticed that was interesting as far as communication goes? So Judith's class, you know, they are German speakers and they all agreed initially to speak English with with our students um, who spoke no German. And so how was that a challenge overcoming that for them? I I feel like they were really they were a little nervous in the beginning and then they realized, you know, and to us, their English was better than a lot of ours, um, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. How did that work for you all? I've been nervous too, <laughs> and will ever be. Uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, if you keep it, um, yeah, the fire. <laughs> um, yes, I, I kind of, I kind of was like also like curious on how they they are going to do this because I mean, obviously they were there voluntarily, but then if you are confronted, then things suddenly change and. Um, I, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, I think there's also a little difference because I feel like you assigned like these project leaders, right? We didn't do this. We, we thought like, let's see how it's going. Um, and often it happens that um, yeah, students with a higher seniority are just taking this over. Um, and at least um, in Germany, often the master's program is also discussed in a sense that uh, designers have this like overview um, vision approach to the projects and often there are really designated good uh, project leaders because they keep the vision together um, but yeah obviously our students they kind of were like frightened like to take this role they don't want it to overwhelm um, their teammates kind of and I really like to see this sensitivity right because especially when they learned that they're like uh, uh, juniors and they were like no but we don't want to bring them in our ideas and like it was like really almost frightened to push too hard or to take over because they wanted all these uh, little qualities to be in there and I kind of find uh, really inspiring how each team kind of figure figured a way around like some did like uh, joint projects but then or uh, like in the sense of working on one piece and some had like like you did with this patches right you you kind of aligned a format and then like it's, I mean, it's a super nice metaphor. You patch, you patch the work together in in a really literate sense, and that's just beautiful. I I, I feel like that's that's especially the way, right? And or we had this um, mingle mind mingle box, uh, where they had this idea of collecting into a box, and then there was this um, question like, how did we deal that we do not have all objects together? So they created this placeholders, 
um, for the teammates um, pieces that are not yet here. Um, and so there was like this kind of reunion. And I think that's the beauty of it, like to see like what what the distance does also to the concept uh, and how we are um, careful and mindful with the ideas that are on the table. Yeah. And each other. Yeah. I think it's really interesting to see um, and hear all of them talk about um, their social identity. Uh, as an educator and as a designer, a practicing designer, I'm very conscious of my um, social identity. And, uh, you know, as I said, I was an international student, so I had to develop this uh, bi identity. Now, after living here for 10 years, the Indian American identity that I'm slowly developing. So I think um, every culture has its own identity. And um, so that's one of the reasons they are finding their own identity through these projects and learning about other cultures and how these cultures uh, merge. Uh, and also, they also have their own different moments, right? So I think that's super important. Uh, and be conscientious of the pos positionality that you have as a designer in this society, as an artist or a designer in this society, right? So I think that's super interesting um, for me to see how they all came together and put this work together, where um, each culture speaks its own language, but our design work kind of brought that language together. So um, through that empathetic work that they were building by building relationships with each other through that process. Um, as we've mentioned, you know, and I know Emran and I, as we've all three discussed, you know, our projects and things we would change for next iteration and the reflection, you know, I mean, that's part of the exciting part is like, oh, how are we going to make this better next time? Or how are we going to make this different? You know, our students with this first iteration, we had them start with a very, a very sort of broad, open ended idea. And it was very interesting to see how they all navigated that, you know, they really had very little specific direction, except to see, you know, they were asked, both groups of students were asked to go to the museums. Um, you all went to. Oh, we actually uh, went to the National National Library uh, in uh, Leipzig, uh, and they have a great collection of um, artist books uh, that already are on the border between being book or object or artwork, and like yeah, we we got some really nice pieces from the archive there. So the German students were inspired by that. And then the Heron students went to the Dia de los Huertos exhibition at the Eidelsjorg Museum um, at the end of October. And so they were sourcing and thinking about objects and how objects tell stories in that lens and that very personal and community lens that's provided by that wonderful exhibition that happens each year. And then um, the students took images from those both exhibitions and brought them together in that application and shared those and then used that as well as personal artifacts that they'd taken pictures of that had already senses of memory, of story, of history. And with just all of these different objects that were significant to people in some way or another, and then coming together and then trying to find connections. Um, did you feel like that was a challenge at times, starting so broad and then trying to narrow it in? Um, for, particularly for my group, I didn't see it as a challenge. I feel like everyone pretty much was able to understand like everything be added to the board and just link everything together. If I feel like the only way it would have been more challenging is if each individual got like a separate idea or went to a separate place. Yeah, again, I think my group is one of the luckier groups. I know some people had like really random objects that they had to struggle to connect with, but I, I, from what I remember, my group, what we all had some pretty strong themes of like childhood and memories and nostalgia. So we were able to pretty quickly connect from that. But again, from that, it's still such a vague thing that we went in like five different directions from that and just decided what we could most easily do and did with like time and what just spoke to us the best. I think um, from the first time I did this project, we kind of 
had a similar thing. So all of us kind of ranked our individual preferences of what um, kind of area of like a like a place that you could go to. Some people did parks, some people did libraries, museums, different things like that. And um, I ended up in a group with everyone who wanted to do cafes. So um, we didn't really necessarily choose our group. We just chose the the area that we wanted to focus in and then we were assigned. And then we even stretched that even farther. And instead of you know comparing the typical American cafe to the typical South Korean cafe, our group was like, let's do cafes, but with like a twist to it. So we were super interested in their VR cafe that they have. Um, and it seemed like a very exciting thing to their culture. And we wanted to um, take a stab at that. And so we were like, well, what kind of cafe do we have here? And we looked at Parlor Public House. Um, it goes from a cafe to a bar at a certain hour. And so we were able to merge our ideas even further from that, but with this sort of more than a cafe um, concept that we came up with and pushed our designs from being just like a brochure to having different um, like interactivity with it as well. So my group ended up creating more of like a table tent idea and it actually kind of functioned like a VR headset and you could look through it and you could pull a timeline through it and you could um, like interact with, with it. And the South Korean counterparts, they ended up creating, it was more like a brochure. All of it had information and was informative um, in both of the designs, but their design ended up being like an incense holder because the Parlor Republic House also has a strong connection with candles. So they wanted to kind of merge, you know, we have candles here that we mostly use for um, like scents and rooms and everything. And they use incense a lot. So they saw the opportunity. And so we created more like engaging things and engaging concepts. Yeah, um, to go along with Ali's for the um, first for the Yonsei project that I collaborated on. Um, we my group was assigned flea markets. So we would do research here for our partners in Yonsei for a flea market in Indianapolis. And then they did research at a flea market in South Korea. Um, and we both shared that information back with each other. Um, I feel like we had some really good um, direction from our professors with that project where it was still, we could still do what we want. It was still open and, and we were free to have, you know, the freedom to do whatever we want, but we had a lot of direction. And then with, I also worked on um, the project with Sydney and Judith and Dalen and I were actually in the same group um, in that project because it was, it was very open from the beginning. I felt like that was a really nice opportunity to just kind of do whatever we wanted. We basically, like Dalen said, we had um, functionality as our topic for our group, but um, that was kind of like our only direction and we just kind of got to do whatever we wanted. And that was also a really nice aspect. Would you recommend doing these experiences? I mean, now you've, you've done three and two, two. Yeah. And so, um, is this something you would recommend to other students and faculty? I, I definitely would. Um, and I'm glad I was forced into it because I feel like my fears and insecurities, I feel like I probably wouldn't have again, because I'm so distrusting of, so distrusting of groups, but since I was forced into it and I can enjoy working in a group again when you're with people that like want to be there and are engaged and are willing to help you through it and make it fun and so I feel like it's important for students or anyone but I feel like especially students who are coming in from those environments that were not so friendly to groups because half the kids don't want to be there um it's important to relearn how to enjoy working in groups and knowing how to work in groups especially using zoom and online resources because that's like using we're using it more and more every year and so it's becoming increasingly like more important to know how to do that kind of stuff even though it may seem simple there's a lot more that you have to consider i mean when you're on a call you have to like lighting and the day we had our presentations miro didn't work so we all had to scramble to like put together really bad powerpoint presentations to still show that we did the project and you just have to know how to adapt like that. I think those are some really important skills to know how to do that. You just don't really get with other opportunities. I would definitely recommend more students and teachers to take part in such like what we did. 
it's never bad to learn about a new culture or a new idea and just share with one another. And with this, I can really see it going further and like more detailed and like more. Um, yeah, I 100% would, would recommend to students and professors, um, especially in, in art in general, culture is extremely important and not everyone has the opportunity to go out and actually study abroad or they don't have the finances. And so doing it this way, bringing it virtually to the students um, is such an incredible opportunity that I, I hope is continued throughout. Yeah, I second that um, pretty much. Like I never thought I would have this opportunity. I always thought about you know studying abroad and then it just didn't seem like it was gonna work out. And then I got to do it twice. And so um, it really like, I can see the, the spark that it's kind of put in um, fellow students that I've worked with to you know wanna go on this Denmark trip that they're going to leave for in a couple of days. And um, you know, it kind of influences design in a different way. Also like you're being culturally aware and there's always something that you can learn from other cultures um, in art and design, you, culture is very influential in our work. And it you don't really realize that until you look at other cultures work. And um, there's always something that you can take away from what they do, whether it be in art and design, whether it be in other areas of life. Um, I think it can, this collaboration could work in, past Heron too. What would you like to see as the next sort of iteration of this project and development past this point for for us? Hmm. <laughs> what do we do next? Yes. I mean, I definitely maybe yeah, just to, yeah, to elaborate on this on this proposal that we made. I think there is still a lot that we can do um, to bring this productivity and the sense of presence into the virtuality. I think there is I mean, Miro is great, right? There's also a lot of future uh, features that really support asynchronous uh, work. So that's not just about meeting, but also to organize yourself asynchronously. Um, but yeah, this essence of presence when working together, like literally side by side, um, that's definitely a topic where I think one can really, yeah, this could be pushed forward. Uh, and I really would love to look into this. Like, Hashtag interaction designer. <laughs> um, and and the other thing is, um, and that's also a little bit, I don't know how it is actually here. Uh, I was like, uh, I had this idea, like, how could I bring my students, right? I Then it showed up on the horizon that I can can be here and that's super cool um, and super important also for the collaboration. Um, and then I was like thinking, how could I get my students? Uh, and then there is programs, but I, like you have to, basically apply one year in advance and like there's like this long way of getting all the funding and stuff and I, I feel like I have to look into this I, we have to get them meet yeah. <laughs> because that's also a bit benefit and then also it changes it changes if you if you're just face to face and see each other in the eyes and say like let's do this right let's do this again yes I think that's the two things where I think we can push it yeah, to reiterate that, I don't think we think of this as stopping as a stopping point. This is just a starting point for more global education and how we can utilize it. You know, how can this, like you said, like spark this excitement and this interest? Um, it's been an incredible opportunity. You know, I was able to go over and visit during education week um, at your school and I met their faculty in person and just developing that sense of trust with your colleagues and understanding that you're in this together is so imperative. You know, if it had been a partner who I'd never met in person and I feel like the investment wouldn't have been there, you know, and to have the support of a colleague and a partner um, on, on the faculty end was so important so that we could then spread that to the students and things like that. And we see this as just a chance, again, to just start this as a discussion of how we can be more engaged and more involved through the gateway systems and things like that. And what does that mean? Um, so I think it's really, really exciting. And hoping to share with our colleagues too that it doesn't have to be this really sterile uh, virtual thing. You know, I think a lot of folks are like, ooh, ooh, online, it's cold, it's impersonal. Um, but by developing these programs, 
more applications will come that that talk about presence and address these things. So I think the more we do, the more we'll get closer to creating this realistic studio practice that happens across 4,000 miles or more in your case. I think it's important to build intercultural sensitivity between like whether it's in the classroom or just interpersonally. We talk about diversity a lot and unless we really immerse ourselves within that diversity, I think it's not possible to really understand and uh, you know, decolonize our thoughts and think about the stereo beyond the stereotypes and uh, beyond the uh, implicit biases, right? So I think this was a great way to bring that into our college classroom and understand each other and understand the process of how uh, people can work together, even when, uh, you know, I always say this, even when languages are different, you still can find a way to work together. And I think this is what the students have done and have showed it to us, right? My background is in teaching English as a second language and so much of our learning was based in gesture and drawing pictures and things like that. And so when we started this um, experience, I was like, Ooh, what are we going to do if I can't, you know, <laughs> you know, all the time and, and point and show this, but it didn't really matter that gesture still translated. And I think we can continue to work on that, but you'll find ways to communicate even in these virtual realms where you're not physically next to a person, you still find cues and you still find ways to, to move forward. Um, and something I really appreciate about this practice is that it's sustainable as far as we're not adding emissions to the environment, you know, travel is amazing, but what can we do to be global without constantly thinking about physically moving through the atmosphere and what we're doing to the planet? So I think it's something that could become just part of every practice, you know, would be really exciting. Maybe I could also have a little, a little thought on that because it just came when, when you were talking about it, uh, that you were sitting there in the night, right? And I feel like when it comes to education, it's also like preparing everyone to be ready for the market or let's say for the world out there to, to do your living uh, in one way or another. And it just reminded me and like that, especially also the professional reality is that you sit there um, in Germany and in India um, defeating your paper that you have handed in on a proposal, uh, which uh, on a on a how do you say uh, on a fair no, on a conference that is situated in Boston, right? And then you have these moments. I mean, it's it's not something that we just do for pure, sheer joy, but it's also part of professionalization. Um, and yeah, I think that's also really whenever I'm in the situation, I feel like connected, and that that's yeah, it's both. It's like feeling connected, having resonance to the world that we are living in, and at the same time being professional. Um, like, uh, yeah, I think that's the best of both, both worlds, kind of. Absolutely, bringing in this virtual global uh, learning pedagogy into our education system has really helped us um, experience another side of the world without leaving our classroom chairs, right? Um, I wanted to add another thing. Um, we have like a very diverse culture uh, of staff here as well. And so from I feel like I learned something from each and every one of my professors. Helen, she helped us um, a lot in these projects. Um, she was um, Emerita's counterpart with it. And I've taken a class with Youngbok as well. And um, they provide like another insight um, to that and just promote, you know, being culturally aware and and promote new ideas that um, maybe we haven't thought about just because our cultures aren't um, like involved in, in that. Well, now we'd like to open it up to the audience. If you have questions for us, um, it goes along with the exhibition in the Marsh Gallery, which we were lucky to share with some of you before and afterwards. It will be open to go down and explore the gallery the gallery is geographically divided by the South Korean um, projects and then the Germany projects. And I just think it's really interesting to see how we started with a great distance and then how it came back together. And then now it is it is a space that you can walk through and experience, you know, and um, 
the application like Miro, it feels like a virtual space that you enter and you experience. So now to have that physical space that you can go into, that's another type of storytelling and sharing that I think is really exciting. And the idea of passing these objects back and forth to each other using traditional mail along with, you know, the digital. So the analog and the digital and what that means as an artist and designer is really exciting. So yes. Thank you. Yeah, if you have questions, let me know. I'll bring you the mic. I have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me? So this is for the students mostly. Um, have you made any personal contacts through this interaction that is driving you to further projects? Or um, are you actually planning to go to the countries or feel propelled to go to the countries that you interacted with? I can answer this one first. So um, the first time I, I worked on this project, I was um, just a sophomore and um, we ended up, you know, making really strong connections with our counterparts. And like, I still follow them on Instagram. They come up on my feed, you know, like we still kind of stay in touch in, in that way. Um, but it also pushed me to take more classes um, that are more culturally aware. So the next semester after I, I did this project the first time, I was in a cross-cultural design class and we were exploring all different sorts of cultures and um, really like self-reflecting and learning about, you know, different assumptions and stereotypes and how do we combat those and how, as a designer, how are we aware about that when we are designing and, and realizing that there's other perspectives out there besides our own culture. Um, and, you know, I think it'd be really cool one day to reconnect and, you know, visit and see, you know, the space that, you know, our projects were about um, one day. Um, kind of going off of what Ali said, I, I don't have any contact with my partners anymore. Just we've kind of moved on. It was about two years ago. So, but, um, it definitely did kind of like get my drive going to explore more cultures. I was also in the cultural design class that Ali was talking about. Um, that was a really great experience. I will also be going on the Denmark trip in two days with the Martha. <laughs> um, so it's definitely, made me want to explore more and experience other cultures and see how I can, I can use that experience towards my design. Um, so I don't, while I don't talk to my Germany counterpart, um, after the project was done, um, it did get me a lot closer with my, the two partners I had here at Heron. We got a lot closer after that. We have a drawing class together this semester and since we knew each other from last semester's project, we kind of got close together and we talked together, you know, we walked to and from class. And so that was a connection I was really grateful for. I mean, me being here in the first place, kind of the connection between us, I think is really important and fun and amazing. So, you know, students and teachers. And I don't know about visiting Germany because I don't know German and that kind of freaks me out. Um, but we'll see. I have friends that are ambassadors. <laughs> Um, this really solidified my drive to travel and like experience different cultures. The summer beforehand, last summer, I left Austria and I came here to join IPUI and just being able to see how other people think and like what drives them and what they really appreciate about different cultures or what they appreciate about their own culture really just like, like I said, like really pushes that drive just to explore everybody and just learn about what everybody likes to do and like what they value. Uh, we mentioned this a little bit in the talk previously, but Judith had the chance to visit Indiana back in 10th grade. Um, tell, you know, so it, it all kind of comes full circle and you went and visited your, your colleagues yesterday. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I have to admit, I've, I've met um, my host family yesterday um, uh, after 20 years, <laughs> can't believe this is 20 years. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, it, something like that. Yes. 
I kind of stumbled upon them. It was like kind of like this. I mean, back in the days, you had to sit down and write an email to stay in contact. Um, and that was a hurdle. I mean, we I think we made it a year and then it kind of slightly faded out. But I mean, that's the, the nice thing, right? If you really made friends with, with, with your heart, I kind of feel like it doesn't matter that it's 20 years and then you drop a mail as soon as you are around. It just doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. Um, and that's what happened yesterday. And yeah, it was 2003. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, and we had a wonderful dinner and it just felt like uh, it's been last year. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. Alexandria, it's like a little north. Um, yeah. All of our yeah. 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 It's been just great. So I, it's like just maybe it was be an, an argument or like just or to say just it doesn't matter if time passes, just drop a mail and we will be around. Promise. <laughs> Hello, my name is Young Book. Uh, uh, first of all, I really appreciate this conversation. Um, while listening to you guys' experience, I kind of start thinking about like, like the the concept of collaboration. Um, you know, when we collaborate with each other, there are many barriers. But you know, when you kind of title your project with a distance in collaboration, I really, I, yeah, this is really um, kind of. Um, I realize we have uh, many kinds of distances when we collaborate with each other. So that was a really interesting concept I heard from you guys. Uh, at the same time, me working for, you know, Ireland Design School as a design faculty member, um, I've been wondering how to collaborate each other, meaning, I don't know about your, I'm, I'm talking to Judy, to your institution, like at least in America, we have a many, we have a kind of like, some sort of segmented kind of structure with the programs and departments. So with all different kinds of re you know requirement, um, we I personally kind of struggle how to work with my colleagues. So um, so um, I was wondering about like if you have any initiative or collaborative experience with your you know um, the units. As far as I know, your program communication design is housed under technology program is that correct um yes i mean we are um, a university for applied science and basically the faculty for design for visual communication is basically just this one little island of design <laughs> within a lot of engineers <laughs> um uh, me personally i i'm i mean maybe that's also why we just kind of matched <laughs> you're like i'm like i go right i see something i like i just go <laughs> grab it and um uh, i've done a lot of collaboration actually um first uh, maybe um uh with the, it was like five years where we co-educated designers and computer scientists together and that was even beyond two institutions because back um, um that was back in berlin so it was an art school and the the Freie University of Berlin and there's the computer science department. So they even managed to get not just disciplines, but also institutions in order to collaborate. Because in this case, me and my partners really believe in this kind of constellations as something that is really important to shape the future and the vision of future and the idea of what we're, where we are going to go, right? What's the idea of our future? Um, and But I feel like there is something like a person there needs this person it needs this personal basement and that's why it's so important that um, um, Sydney visited and that I come here because I feel like there is a lot of hurdles yeah as you noticed right there is just a just the the hallway can be a huge barrier if everyone is in this routines and you have to do your deadlines and you have to hand all the forms in and there's a lot to do and if there's not this little spark of personal connection I feel like um, it's really hard to really realize those kind of programs. That's what I learned from five years with this other colleague of mine, and now again with with uh, Sydney, because there was this spark, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I totally totally agree with you. At the same time, I wanted to appreciate the inspirations I got from you because 
again, this is totally my interpretation. The concept embodiment is something I can attach, you know, my discipline as well as, you know, the, the department and program within Heron Art and Design School. So I, I just want to say thank you because you guys' experience really provide me some, you know, insights. How can we really create a more, you know, creative community in learning, uh, overcome all different kinds of distances. So I really learned and appreciate it. At the same time, I want to have an open invitation to you because you visited my class, right? Yes, it, it was really great. nice <laughs> to figure out like more like methodical inquiry, you know, um, as an art and, artist and designer. So I, this is my comment at the same time, open invitation to you. Yeah, I enjoyed your class very, uh, very much. It was, I feel, I don't know if you feel it, but I felt like I could jump right, right, right away into the water and just add comments because I felt like so home. <laughs> just like, yeah, I love these kind of formats where you just discuss and are really, let's maybe again uh, to this argument of being um, patient and careful and mindful with the ideas that are on the table because they are precious and they're, they are like common ground and we treat them as our own uh, when we discuss them. Yeah. And I think this could very well, I mean, Emrit and I are both really interested in seeing how we can involve colleagues here at Heron as well. We've had amazing support from the Office of International Affairs with Leslie Bozeman and Jason Dees, who are our, our, our fearless leaders, uh -huh, our support and our um, resources and everything. So it is here on campus. It, it Everything is here and available for us. So it's just a matter of getting together and taking advantage of it. And how can we collaborate across the hall as well as 4,000 miles or more away? You know, so it's really exciting. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, I was wondering, uh, did any of you, uh, before you started this or when you were students, aside from uh, working with the, uh, the Koreans, uh, did you go and visit any of the Asian art at the uh, New Fields? It's very different, you know, it looks very different from uh, art made in Indiana. And I was wondering if if uh, that was part of your thinking. Um, my group specifically, we did not, but we were definitely like looking online instead. Um, the first time we did this project, we um, were um, kind of, more it was uh 2022 so it was still very like covid -y, like times branching out of that and um it was like hard you know we were still all wearing masks so um that kind of felt like a, a barrier and um made it feel like we couldn't like really go out and like see that um but the second time i did the project we didn't look at the museums but we were focusing on food. So um, we were kind of stuck in a, a rut for a little bit. And then Maritha and Helen suggested that we just we just go out and see what, what the food is like. Um, and so we traveled to um, different international grocery stores, markets. And then, um, yeah, we kind of just spent our time going around different bakeries and things. And um, it was really cool to do that as a group. And then we actually sat down at a um, Korean restaurant and um, tried some of the food and everything. So we kind of like immersed ourselves with the the access that we had here in, in Indy. Yeah, I also, because like Ali said, it was during COVID times, um, our group did not go out to the museum, but we did have really good contact with our group in South Korea and they were able to kind of go out for us and take pictures and kind of report back to us the things that they were seen and the things that they felt were important in their culture that we should um, show in our project. So through that, we got a little bit of kind of the experience of what it's like um, in their culture. So, I felt like I'm just one of those 
people where I'm like, if I'm in a Zoom call and, you know, the it was kind of like a dark age time of sorts, right? I was like, I was always the first one to like have my camera on and it kind of like encourages everyone else to do that as well because, uh, you know, I just wanted, didn't want it to feel like, you know, we could have just had this as a phone call, you know? It was like, I wanted to make those connections and I feel like as a designer and being involved in art, like it's really important to be able to see each other's face and expressions and um, we're very visual people and I think it's important to to do that. Yeah, I think it was also implemented by me, to be honest. I said, if you're all putting the time and effort to be here, we should definitely try a little bit harder to engage with each other. So we should, like, I cannot force you to have your camera on, but I would definitely really appreciate if we could all have our cameras on so we can see each other, learn from each other, and talk to each other. So there were moments like um, where we said that, sure, if you need to put your camera up, you can, but let's jump in and talk to each other when we can and say hi. So that's how we have all our beautiful pictures in the gallery where all our cameras were mostly on. And, you know, we all gave virtual group hugs <laughs> through the little images. It was also interesting to see the little bit of background that you have, like the physical space behind the person, you know, um, our class met at 830 in the morning and you were all afternoon, evening. Okay, yes. And so, you know, a lot of our students were still in bed or co cozied up in their their little personal environments because they hadn't left home. And then a lot of your students were already at school and they would Zoom together. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just really interesting to just see that little bit of context clues for each group and to kind of be looking past the person be like, what's on your wall? What is that over there? You know, and to start those connections too. Did it though um we you had already assigned and created the groups and then as a group we decided our preference of our area of focus so it was interesting to be a part of like the two different ways that the groups came about I can go first. <laughs> um, it really like brought to my attention how real 
the concept is that we focus on in visual communication design, that it's people-centered design. And I feel like first having this opportunity as a sophomore really pushed me to uh, realize that the design is a lot bigger and broader than I I, I imagined at first. Um, I feel like I like as a designer, I really excelled uh, from my first semester to my second semester, and I just been able to carry it with me. This the very first project that we had is is and always will be probably like a statement piece on my portfolio that I always point out. Um, so I think that kind of answers. Um, so I feel like something that really impacted how I see my own art is how to incorporate myself and my identity into my art because um, our group's project was focused on childhood memory and nostalgia. And so we were thinking of how we can, and we did um, embroidered and like textile patches of that. And so we started thinking, how can we incorporate, you know, the media as a part of the concept as well? And the way that turned out was really interesting. I mean, for example, um, one of my group mates used old, she took old t-shirts from old events and different experiences throughout her life and used them with her textile patch to create another memory. So it's a memory within a memory. And then for me, I took a bunch of old fabric that I had from my childhood. You know, some of it is stuff that my grandma had used to make clothes for my older sister, just scrap fabrics we had collected over the years and old buttons and old beads. And I incorporated that into it to just give another layer to it and it's was really fun and kind of eye-opening to think you have this piece that is about you but then it's another layer of you if that makes sense for me um I felt like when I started design that I had kind of a hard time branching out of the western design I felt like that was kind of I was kind of stuck in a rut and so after we started collaborating with other students from other cultures, I got to see how design and how art is portrayed in other cultures. And it really inspired me to kind of branch out and play with new things in my design. And aside from that, having these projects that I can say that I worked on with other people and that I can put on my resume has really helped me. Um, it's helped me find internships and jobs, just saying that I've had this cultural experience. I got my first internship working at the Center for Research on Inclusion and Social Policy at IU's Public Policy Institute. And a big, I think a big part of that, why I got the internship was because of this, this opportunity that I had. Something I really enjoyed watching the students experience um, was learning how to defend their their ideas. So because you're in a group and you're all trying to collaborate, you're all trying to come to a place together. Sometimes there are things that were so important to one of the artists that they felt they learned how to describe why it was important and why they had to hold on to that little bit and why we could get rid of these other maybe little things. But this understanding why something was so integral to them and their expression and that artwork and then learning how to give language to that to defend that choice, you know. Um, so, you know, you think of sometimes when everyone's trying to find a middle ground, certain things get lost, you know, and then for these young people to say, no, this is really important and I need to describe it in some way, you know, and learning how to keep that as part of the project and how to how to voice that to each other, I think was really good. How to stand up for what you believe in and why you think you need to express it. It's really cool. I think like there's a sense of um, sacrifice and compromise that comes to us as designers, especially if you're working in a big group together. So I think that is extremely important to learn and know how to develop where I need to sacrifice my thoughts because someone else's thought might be equally or more important in this context, right? So I think that was uh, really good to see how they were growing um, through that process. I was just gonna say that with this project, I really, it really took me off my box of wanting to do the academic, the classical, the realism, and just going back to be able to craft or like work with paper mache or textile. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate everyone visiting tonight and your questions were wonderful. 
thank you so much for your time and for your insight and excited to see how we can continue these collaborations. Hopefully these are relationships you will be able to continue to have. But again, thank you all for being here this evening. Really grateful for your time.